Story Channel, we are doing an interview right now with the owner of La Fortuna, Kat, I can't pronounce your last name. Mac. Kat Mac, but it's spelled, it's spelled with a K, so it always throws me off. Kat is going to tell us a little bit about how her and her husband Steve uh, started La Fortuna, how they came together here in Guatemala, and uh, we're just going to have a very random, candid conversation. So I'm going to turn the floor over to Kat. I'm going to ask her some questions, and she's going to give us more information on La Fortuna. So the very first thing, and probably I'm not the only one who probably wants to know this, how did you even get to Guatemala? Like why, like why Panajachel? It's actually Santa Cruz. Why Santa Cruz, Guatemala? Why this spot? Uh, I would say that once we had decided on Guatemala, we came here and we went to look for properties around the lake in 2010. Um, and Steve had a vision of something that was like a blank slate. And if, as you know, living here, most of the properties developed. So getting a, a waterfront property that had nothing already on it mm. uh, was going to be difficult. So we were here for three or four days. We were looking with a realtor. Uh, we looked at an existing hotel as well that was for sale, but had decided, no, like we really wanted to have our stamp. Um, and I don't know if you were here. No, you weren't here in 20, 2010. Mm -hmm. uh, so we were here and Agatha, Hurricane Agatha hit while we were here and we got trapped at the lake. No way. Yep. Oh my God. <laughs> and we were coming by in a boat and we could see a waterfall on this property and it was just green and there was one little dock. So we asked our realtor, like, what's that? And is it for sale? And he's like, oh, yeah, but there's no power. There's no, there's no, no there's nothing. And they're like, yeah, that's what we want. So he brought us here. Um, we had the guardian come with a machete and like cut a path up to the old stone house. That was the only thing on the property. And Steve's eyes were just like <laughs> a kid in a candy store. <laughs> and I was like, okay, don't look too excited. We still have to negotiate. But, um, so that's kind of why we ended up in this specific spot on the lake. Um, so up. you were here. So you were here through Hurricane Agatha. Well, we were looking for property, so we weren't. We hadn't moved here yet. Okay. We just had. We knew we were going to move to Guatemala, and we knew we wanted to be at the lake. Um, I had to be by water, and I said, if I'm leaving Toronto, it's got to be like, yeah. So you, but you and Steve had traveled to other locations around the world. So why Guatemala? Like, what was it about this place in particular that you're like, no, I, it has to be Guatemala. I. It had to be Guatemala because. Um, so Steve was a tour guide here and the second time that we ever met, he had a break here and we'd met in La Fortuna, Costa Rica. So that's why okay. we're named La Fortuna. And, I didn't know that. Yep. Okay. And so it was like eight weeks later and he's like, I have a week off. If you can come and join me, if you loved Costa Rica, you're going to even more love Guatemala. So I'm like, Hey, free tour guides. So <laughs> I packed my bags. I came to Guatemala and he showed me around. And part of the tour was obviously here at the lake. And as soon as I got here, I just felt like this is so beautiful. Like, like the weather's perfect. It's mm -hmm. not too hot. It's not too cold. We have mountains, we have the, the lake. Um, it just was beautiful. And so, you know, fast forward two and a half years later, when we, we, decided to do something together. Um, we came to the lake because we wanted to see if we could find what our vision was and Hurricane Agatha happened. It was okay. also when he proposed to me. Did he really? So it was Aww. very funny because he proposed at Cousin Window in Hibolito. Really? And that night, Pakai went off and closed the airport. Oh my God. <laughs> and the next day, Agatha hit. So it was like... I Holy. was laughing, saying, like, it's like somebody's trying to tell us something. But, yeah, we got, we got engaged and all of that. And then we found the property, so it felt like it was meant to be. Wow, that's yeah. great. So where did you guys get married? In Antigua. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. So tell me about, or tell us, about the design. Like, how did you, like, where did this vision come from? And we will show you, I'll show you uh, clips of the area. But where did this vision even come from? Like, this place is beyond breathtaking. Like, it's beyond magnificent. So for somebody to have to have thought up all the details and, and the casitas and everything, where did all that come from? Uh, I can't take any of the credit for that. Um, <laughs> I married someone who's very artistic and an A-type personality, which usually don't wow. go together. <laughs> um, so every 
every building that you see, every stick of furniture almost in the entire property, he's designed himself. Wow. Um, he hasn't made it. He did make some of it for the first bungalow, bungalow one. Okay. But then obviously it becomes a little bit burdensome to be trying to make that much um, for six rooms. So he actually we have two amazing carpenters who work for us. Um, and now they understand his aesthetic, so they're able to okay. look at his drawings. And so all the furniture is still being made in-house, pretty much. Wow. But it's, like, under Steve's design. And then our okay. guys our guys are super talented. And, like, same with all the, the beautiful walls that you see. We have two amazing masons, which were – they're on full-time staff. Wow. So they're always doing little projects, whether it's a wall or wh whether it's part of a building or whether it's, like, the waterfront. So – um, wow. Yeah, he, he, everything is Steve, and the inspiration mostly for the bungalows is Balinese. We had backpacked through Southeast Asia for four and a half months, and during that trip, Steve had a sketchbook, and there were certain, like, roof lines that he just fell in love with, and so he started sketching the roof lines. Okay. And then my background is I used to work for the Ministry of Environment, so my concern was always to make sure that whatever we did, A, it wasn't an eyesore, so we blend in with the surroundings, but also that we're using sustainable materials. And so all of the roofs that we have, and you'll see it when you show yeah. pictures of the bungalows, um, are the Balinese-style bamboo roofs. Okay. Um, and that came from that trip. But it also, we just felt like it would blend in with the, with the surrounding, like, it's kind of sad when you just see someone put up like a stark, mm. you know, concrete building in the middle of the jungle. I know, right? Yeah. So this property is only accessible by lake or by boat, sorry. So what was the uh, journey like getting all the materials over to build all these houses? What, how long did all that take? It took us two years um, because we That's bought this property. There was no water. There was no electricity. So we are 100% off-grid solar powered. We do have a backup generator so that we can run our washing machines and our dryer. Um, but we try to minimize it and only run it for like an hour a day. But otherwise, we're fully off-grid. And now we have Starlink, which is great. So we have really wow. good, strong internet oh, um, cool. all over the entire property, which is great. Cool. Um, but So it took you... So there's... Five. There's five houses, five suites on the. There's five bungalows right now. We're building six. Right. So, when did you? So when did the first bungalow? Like when were you first? The first bungalow was finished and ready for renting out, or did you wait and do it? Like no. we we did a little bit iteratively. So okay. bungalow one and two were open first. And, and what, how long did it take from the time you it was, bought? It was like two years. Two, two years. Two full years of doing okay. all the infrastructure because we had to do all the landscaping. We had right. to put in all the wires underneath, connecting it to the solar power. We had to put in pipes. We had to put in water pipes. Where did you guys live during all this? Oh, Steve was camping <laughs> on the property. I was in Canada Seriously? Still. Oh, we, really? We, we lived apart for the first two and a half years. Oh, like after you got married? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah, I stayed in Canada, and I sent the money, um, and he was here building, and he was camping for the first year. That's why he got Sasha, because... Camping, our German like, here? Well, we had that house, the yeah. stone house that we just walked by, um, but it had no power. It had no water. Oh, my God. It was just a shelter, essentially, but we had, like, a kerosene lamp. I so didn't know that. He had a camp stove. Yeah, he was camping here. Wow. So, two years. That's crazy. So, two years... For the first two houses, so they were so they were ready at the, both at the same they time. They were then? built in tangent together, okay. and then three and four were built like just very quickly after them. Okay. So when we opened, we bought the property in December 2010, and we opened our doors November 2012. Wow! And all all the houses were ready. All four were, four. were open. I think three and four may have been like two months after that, but we had like our first paying customers in November 2012. Okay, yeah. that must have been pretty exciting, eh? Yeah, I mean, I wasn't here yet, so... Oh, that's, so when did you get here? I got here in 2013. Wow, so he was running the show? He was the cook, yeah. he was the chef, he was the... We didn't have a reception building, so he would meet people, he was the boat driver, he'd go pick them up, he'd bring them, he'd check them in, he'd cook them dinner, he'd cook them breakfast. Oh my God. We had two girls working for us, and they were helping doing laundry and serving. Okay. But yeah, it was it was basically Steve, and then I would come in um, like every three months for a week, okay. and then I would pitch in and help out and meet the guests and do that part for him. And then when I moved here in 2013, we still were cooking out of our house. We didn't have 
we didn't have a reception building. We didn't have the kitchen. We have an industrial kitchen now. Right. And so we were cooking in our house. So we would wake up at five in the morning oh and Steve would do breakfast and I would serve it. And then I would do the dishes and then Steve would do dinner and I would serve it. Aww. And it was just like, like 18 hour days. It was, wow. It was crazy. That sounds crazy. So at what point then were you, were you able to hire staff and, you know, relax a little bit more and not have to put in so many hours? At what point did that happen? Um, I want to say we got our first front desk helper and they were only working a couple of shifts, but it, you know, alleviated some stress for me. Okay. Was maybe in 2015. Okay. So we were running the show pretty much for the first three years. Yeah. And then we started bringing on a front reception. For, oh, we built the reception in 2014. So it would have been after 2014. Okay. It opened November, 2014. So we would have had someone start probably in the new year in 2015. Okay. Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. So is there anything else you want to share about this property? Well, actually, I have one more question for you. So you're building another casita, mm -hmm. uh, number six, which is going to be quite the, it's way bigger. Two, how many beds? Three bedrooms? No, it's it's one bedroom, but the dining room can be converted to a second bedroom, but it's three bathrooms. Three bathrooms. Yeah. Okay. And that'll be ready Hopefully. Soon. <laughs> Soon. Yeah. We're not sure when. So is that, do you think that's it now? You have six houses and you think that's it. Like, do you, what do you see as the future of La Fortuna? Like you, you're pretty settled here now and this is life. Yeah, I think, I mean, we always wanted to keep it small. We always okay. wanted people to feel like they weren't on top of each other. Um, okay. And also the way that we design reception, it's for maybe 14 people. You can't put too many right. people in there. Um, we've toyed with the idea of maybe putting some tree houses, like, cause we own five acres here. Oh, wow. So we go up the mountain. There's a trail. I don't know if you've ever done uh -uh. the trail. Yeah. There's a little trail up to a viewpoint. Um, and that's the top of our property line. So we have lots of land we could, if we wanted to build some tree houses, but okay. I, we're at this point, we're like, I think we're going to stop at six for a while. Okay. We renovated our, our old house. So now it's a guest house. So technically we could rent that out as well to be a seventh. If you um, needed to. If we needed to. Right. Um, but we also bought a new property in Santa Catarina um, that we've been sitting on for two years. And when we're finished here, we want to do like a nice little Airbnb because, you know, the sunsets are really pretty. Yes. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Very nice. So uh, I want to just um, veer into another direction. So is this pet friendly or not? Yes. 100%. So people can bring their... Yes. People can bring... Yeah. So you also have two dogs. Three dogs. Oh, right. Yeah, three. I didn't yeah. see the third one. Yeah. So you have three dogs. Tell us about your dogs. Yeah. So we work with uh, an NGO here called Ayuda Los Gatos y Peros. And uh, my husband's actually on the board. Um, so uh, it's basically spaying and neutering education for locals here around the lake. But they also obviously get dogs that need to go up for adoption. So one of our dogs is adopted through Ayuda. Actually, we've had two in the past. We had another one who unfortunately passed away. Mm. And then we have another, because uh, Ayuda, uh, you work with Ayuda as yeah, well. So, yeah, I do. Um, she's really trying to support other grassroots um, organizations. So uh, Stay to Stray, Stray to Stay. Stay to Stay. No, yeah. straight to straight stay. To stay. <laughs> straight to uh, stay. Another right. local <laughs> organization, and our newest dog comes from them. She greeted me off the boat. Yep, her name is Nellie. <laughs> She's lovely. Yeah. So we like obviously we don't have kids, so for us like our dogs are our children. But okay. there's also obviously a problem here in Guatemala, and yeah. there's a lot of dogs that need help and need homes. So we're big supporters of that. In fact, like. I think almost every single one of my staff have adopted through Ayuda. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, so we've taken a lot of dogs out of the system. Good. You know, it never feels like yeah. it's enough, but we're, we're know, trying our I best. Um, so people can... But they can bring their dogs too, because our dogs. dogs are super social. Okay. Um, as long as the person's dog, we just ask them to send us a message and just let us know and that they're not too big. Um, and we just indicate there are three female, female dogs here. So if your dog has issues with other dogs and maybe it's not a great not fit great. um but for the most part anyone who brings their dog our dogs get along or, yeah. or ignore them like <laughs> um so yeah we are pet friendly um good yeah cool okay i think do you have anything else to share i think that's all the questions that i had that i wanted to know about la fortuna do you have anything else that you wanted to share about your property i mean I, the only other thing i don't know if you knew is that this used to be a coffee finca so this whole area, our the whole property, property really coffee plantation. 
So we have a thousand plants, coffee plants, and the coffee that you have in the morning is actually harvested from our property, and it's a unique, it's the only bean, the, our bean is the only bean in the world because the person who used to own this property owned a finca in San Marcos, mm -hmm. and they took that bean and crossed it with an Atila sure. bean, no so our bean is very unique just to this bay, so... So who roasts it? Do you have a roastery here? Roasteries? We, roastery? No. Yeah, ro Roast. roaster. <laughs> um, we do all the processing um, up to roasting, and then we bring it to a roaster in Antigua called Azotea. Okay. They're a huge roaster, um, and they roast for us, and then they package it and put our label on it and vacuum seal it so that it stays fresh for the year. So do they sell it, or they just... No, they just do it for us. They just bring it Yeah, here. we bring it. We don't, we don't have enough to sell. We just have enough to oh, consume okay. here. Right, right, right. Um, very cool. Oh, yeah. That's a cool story. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Kat, for mm -hmm. your time. We are going to, I'm going to show you some more videos of this fabulous property. And if you, I'm going to drop some links down below. So if you ever want, this is probably like my fourth time. I think it's your fifth, fifth time. Yeah. Fourth or fifth time here because it's so peaceful and it's so quiet and it's pure magic when you come here. Like it's just so chill. Um, so I'm going to drop some links down below. You can check out. Uh, La Fortuna, go to their website and check out the other suites. I'm going to show you mine. I can't show you the other suites because there's people in there right now. So check them out. Book your room. You're going to absolutely love it. If you've never been to Guatemala and you really want a true, beautiful experience, you have to come and check out La Fortuna. Thank you very much, Kat, for your time. And we will catch y'all back here on the next video. Stick around. I'm going to show you some videos of La Fortuna.